Just a quick announcement from the team department. Uh, if you want to mark your calendars, Sunday, November 13th at noon, following church service, we're going to be hosting a uh, barbecue and baked goods sale down in the uh, fellowship hall. For those that have been coming, it's known as the uh, Chili Spuds and Sweets. We're changing it up this year. We're going to barbecue and baked goods. If you would like to participate in that, you can sign up out in the foyer by the TV. There's a sign-up sheet out there. I think Miss Susan has already signed up, so you can follow her lead on that. Uh, proceeds from that are going to be going to, we have five teens going to NYC in uh, summer 23. And like Ms. Robin shared a few weeks ago, that is a life-changing event. So if you want to participate in that in any way and support those teens, uh, you can do that by donations coming on the 13th or making a uh, pie to be auctioned off, pie baked goods of some sort. So if you have any questions, see myself, Ms. Emily, or Pastor Randy. Thank you. Very quickly, I just want to say thank you to everyone that participated in any way in Trunk or Treat last week. We had perhaps our largest crowd ever. Uh, we had 26 vehicles set up. We had all kinds. We had at least 150 kids registered, and we know that some of them came down the steps and didn't get in the registration line. So we had a great crowd. I just want to say thank you to everybody. Two other things real quick. First of all, don't forget... This is the last Sunday for socks, but you know as well as I do, if you want to continue to bring them, leave them at the Welcome Center and we'll take them. And then starting next week, we will start picking up uh, and collecting coats for those that are in need. So if you have some coats, bring them, put them out there. We'll have a receptacle out there for you to put them in. And I said two, but I want to also mention, don't forget to bring in your baked goods for our um, brown bag Sunday. And I think that's all I've got. So Kathy Wiseman's coming at this time. Oh, Barbara. Come on, Barbara, and then Kathy. Good morning, ladies of Elk River Church of Nazarene. I'd like to talk to you about one minute. In your bulletin, it says Women's Hope Builders. If you will look at that, it's going to happen on November the 18th at 7 o'clock, but at 6.15 till 6.45, we're going to have like a yak and snack in uh, Kathy's classroom if you'd like to come to that. But if you can't, be here with us at 7 o'clock on November the 18th. Uh, the Lord has laid this on my heart uh, for a while, and guess what? Now I'm stepping out. So I'd like to see all you ladies come and invite people, and it's free. Thank you. <laughs> All right, good morning. All right, well, Elk River, we are a blessed people, are we not? God has been good to us through ups and downs and arounds and everything else. Today, um, as a representative of your church board, and if you are on the church board, would you please stand? If you're on the church board, there you go, show your faces. Some of you can't see, but Joe Beha and Larry Pickens back here in this corner, and then there's several people here in the choir, and then, of course, Robin and Diane and myself. We want to thank you uh, for your faithfulness to Elk River Church of the Nazarene. Eddie McMinn as well sitting over there on that side. We need a representative from that back there. We need to have everybody in our, in our churches represented. <laughs> but let me just say this. You can sit down now. Um, as much as we are so appreciative of you as a church we have been blessed for many years I would say many 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 years <laughs> to be shepherded by Pastor Randy Letzum when the board asked me to be um, church secretary Randy said you can't have a board meeting without my permission I said, okay, that's the rules. By the way, it's not just for me, but it's for everybody. But anyway, um, so I asked him last Sunday, I said, can we have a 15-minute? He never asked what it was about because I think he probably thought there was something going on. But we met last Sunday, and really, this is Pastor Appreciation Month. If you didn't know that, all of October is Pastor Appreciation Month. 
And we want to say thank you with um, our, all of our hearts. So Susan lets them come up here, please. I know she's going to hate me, but she'll get over it. Um, you know, when we, when we have what we've been going through over the last several years, we've been through pandemics. We've had our families that have been hurt. We've had celebrations. We've had losses. We've had 50th wedding anniversaries, right, Kathy? <laughs> And we have all through all of that had the steady hand of Pastor Randy Letzum and his wife, Susan. Susan is such an energy powerhouse for kids. She let me work with him one time and then she said, never again. <laughs> I don't have the patience, <laughs> but we are blessed to have them. So as a church board and as your representation, we wanted to provide Pastor Randy Letzum this pastor appreciation gift, not fancy. See, I don't do fancy. But it is a week's salary in addition to, we're not taking anything away, we're giving him an additional week's salary because of his wonderful service. I know it gets tiring, but he continues on. He does it with jokes and laughter and misspoken words like spelling E and E-A-N, but we forgive him. But can you, as a body of believers, of this church, this fellowship of believers, could you please stand and give your appreciation to Pastor and Susan? I feel like the people in the big awards, whether you just can't say anything because everybody's still clapping, so. Uh, next Sunday, here's your invitation, and you don't know about this either, but we're going to put this in your order. We're going to have an appreciation march for Pastor and Susan, um, and we're going to also do the same for Bill Burdett, who's one of our associates, for Mike Todorovich, who's one of our associates, for Jason Hunley, who is now uh, pastoring our teen group, and Sean Caston as well. These are, Randy doesn't do all this alone. We are growing other pastor, uh, pastoral help and assistance, and we're blessed to have all these rich men of wisdom in our congregation. So what we're going to do when the praise team is singing Family of God, we're going to give all of you an opportunity because, quite frankly, when you leave the church, we have so many doors and so many exits. You may want to try to shake hands with someone. By the time you turn around and you're trying to shake hands with them, they're gone, Right? So we're going to have our pastor standing up here, and this is your moment to come up and just say thank you. If you want to give him a card, we'll have a basket up here. But really, it's just to give you that moment to say thank you. We're starting the two months of Thanksgiving in my mind, where we're thankful for all of our blessings. He's one of our blessings. It's a, it's a, it's a time of giving. We think about gifts. What better way to take care of our pastors as it's called for in Scripture than to thank them and give them that moment for you to shake their hand, tell them how much you appreciate them, and we'll do that next Sunday. So we appreciate all of you. We appreciate you and Susan. God bless you and thank you for your service. Thank you very much. Uh, we know uh, that most of you love us, at least. I'm teasing. We know, we feel the love, we feel the prayers. And your prayers are most important uh, as we've come through these last two years. You've been faithful in praying and being there uh, for us and for others. And uh, that's what makes Elk River, Elk River. And uh, thank you for, for being you. Since we're, since we're sort of messed up here, uh, <clears throat> thanks to Kathy. No. We do want to say uh, happy 50th anniversary to Harold and Kathy Schaefer. Stand up so we can see you. <laughs> Thank you. They had a, a lovely time last night. And then, then today, someone is, is in a new decade. Don't you hate it when you go into a new decade? Happy uh, birthday, Shara. 
Neil entering her 40s today. So happy birthday, Cher. <laughs> if you're not feeling old, it'll come soon. So uh, it's all right. Isn't it good to enjoy the family of God and enjoy being together? Let's stand today and let's worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Put a smile on your face. Yeah. 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 As we come into your presence, we remember every blessing that you pour.
of our praise. He's worthy of our praise. This is my desire. we prepare our hearts for prayer this morning so many of us know of ones who just need a touch from the Lord we pray Lord uh, that the Lord would touch Woody this morning we ask that he'd draw close to Carol and her family in the loss of her niece this week and we want to pray for uh, Debbie Stone Still in the hospital, Debbie Brown, who is in Meadowbrook Nursing Home for Rehab. Joanne Patton, a friend of the church, is having a heart cath. She texts this morning. Then also pray for Jackie. She's been to several doctors this week with the cough. Um, they have referred her back to um, Cincinnati to see if they can determine anything. And Angie Foster's family is uh, struggling as well with the flu and COVID and viruses. We want to pray especially for them and Jake Buckner, who's still in the hospital. There's a list in your bulletin. It's not just put there for the sake of uh, having names written down. It's put there for you to take with you throughout the week to be reminded to pray for the needs of those that are listed there. It becomes a responsibility 
of the church and we can participate and worship in that manner as well. Pray for Jack Pressburg, who is uh, Jackie's grandson. They received word that uh, one of his friends in North Carolina was in a car accident. He lost his life. Uh, one of the other boys is in a coma, and uh, the other one in the car has two broken legs. It's hard to be uh, 16 years old and realize that a friend of yours has left this world. So we need to pray. We need to lift each other up and count each day as a blessing. sudden tragedy. I'm so thankful that Debbie knows God and she knows where she's going. She told Glada the other day that she had to face reality and that upset Glada. Debbie has been Glada's life all her life. And right now, Deb, Glada is hurting and hurting and so is Debbie. So I just... I want to be anointed for Glada and Debbie and for Ann and for the whole family this morning. Absolutely. Let's sing that chorus. Just the end of it one more time. Lord, I give you my life. I give you my soul. I live for Some of you would like to come and gather with Joanne as she stands in for Debbie and Glada and the family. Uh, such a sudden event that no one expected. But uh, God is able. God can work. God can give strength, help, healing, wisdom. And we're just trusting for the Lord's good and perfect will to be accomplished. It's not something that uh, we put on a wish list, but it's something that we want God's will to be done in this situation. Let's pray. Father, we do come before you today so grateful that you care about the things that break our hearts. I pray, Lord, that today, especially that as... Uh, Glada may very well be watching us today. And I pray, Lord, that you would just wrap your loving arms around her. Lord, that you would uh, give her the assurance of knowing that you are with her as you walk each and every day of her life. We pray, Lord, for Debbie, who's in the hospital, continue to touch uh, the, the platelets and the things that need to occur to allow her to be able to come home. Father, you know her body, you understand it all, and I pray that you would touch her even today. Lord, we pray for Jerry and Ann and Kelly and the nieces and the nephew, that, Lord, you would bring comfort to their hearts. Thank you, Lord, for Debbie's witness to them. Thank you, Lord, for her boldness in knowing uh, that everything is okay with her and her Savior and, and sharing that how sometimes tragedy causes us to look a little deeper into our lives. Lord, I just pray that you would touch this morning. I pray that you would fill that hospital room with your presence. I pray, Lord, you would fill that home with your presence that would minister to the hearts for your Holy Spirit. Your Holy Spirit can minister to us in our times of need. And I pray, Lord, that you would also be with these requests that have been made. We pray, Lord, that you would be with Debbie Brown, with Jackie, with this family that has lost a teenage boy. We pray, Lord, that you would draw close to them. Those who are facing tests and surgeries, 
I pray, Lord, that you would draw close to those families as well. May they know that they have a church and people who love them, and people who are lifting them up, for in the times of our need, sometimes we're unable to even express ourselves to you. But I'm so thankful for a church family that can pray, that can encourage, that can help in times of need. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. We pray these things in the loving name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Lord, I give you my life. I give you my soul. I live for you each day. Every step that I take. Every moment I'm away, Lord, have your way in me. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm away, Lord, have your way in me. Yeah. 
Thank you, choir, for that beautiful reminder. There's strength and power in Jesus' name. Not just while we're here, right? Every day as we go through life, pray now, pray now. What a joy it is to be together. What an opportunity we have to worship in spirit and in truth, but also to fellowship with one another. You'll find uh, in the foyer out there by the uh, announcement television that there are several things you can sign up for, things for you to be a part of, things for you, now listen closely, things for you to invite a friend to. Doesn't just have to be a service here at church. As a matter of fact, it's more important to bring people and introduce them to your friends before they come to church, to know that we're okay, just a little crazy, but okay. And it uh, gives you that opportunity, and that's how we reach out to those around us. I strongly encourage anyone who may work with someone, who uh, knows someone that uh, may benefit from the surviving the holidays uh, grief share, it's a two-hour afternoon session, and uh, we have the books already here, but I promise you it'll be a great time of just sharing. It doesn't matter how long ago it's been that you lost someone or how recent, and I'd encourage you to sign up for that and be a part of that. So look at the opportunities that are out there, the things for the teens and for uh, all that's uh, going on around the church. So let's be a part of those wonderful, wonderful activities. Don't forget that we have the offering boxes at the back door. That's how we give and continue to support the local church. And thank you for your continued faithfulness and support. As you can see, the uh, computer is locked up. But let me tell you the good news. November the 8th, Best Buy is coming to install a brand new computer because of a donation that is given. So um, thank you. Thank you to the ones who had donated toward that cause without any prompting. Aren't you thankful that God speaks to people and they meet the needs of the church and of others? And thank all of you who participate in the meal train that uh, Belinda Browning and uh, Sandy Bogus uh, help coordinate. If you want to know more about that, wave your hand back there, Belinda, so we can see you. She's all the way in the back corner right there. If you're not getting the messages about those that uh, we can provide meals for, contact uh, Belinda or Sandy Bogus, and uh, you are being a blessing. And uh, I don't know who, who sends the meals, gets the meals, does the meals, but that's not important. It's important that you allow the Lord to use you to minister to someone in their time of need. So that's what the church is. That's what the church is all about. Would you turn your hearts to Susan Green as she comes to share with us? Just a few days of trouble A wise man once said But I'll not complain For I'm sheltered, I'm clothed, I'm fed But many's the trials my wants and my dreams put me through and the only real peace that I have dear Lord is in 
Susan, and how true, how true. The only real peace that we can have is in Jesus. Here we are at the end of October, the 30th. Who cares? I can't believe that 2022 is winding down. How about you? Seems as though it just uh, flies by. But we're beginning a a series today on gratitude. You say, well, pastor, it's still October. Yes, it is. And the last Sunday of November begins Advent. So we have to kind of keep ahead of things. We're at least not putting out Christmas decorations before uh, Halloween. Though the stores do. Though some of you may have it still up from last year. That's okay. It's whatever you want. 
But we want to to learn and begin to remind ourselves during this Thanksgiving season what we should be grateful for. The fundamentals of gratitude. Gratitude is a fundamental ingredient to a deep and a meaningful life. If we want to have the things that we've been preaching about, the hope, the joy, the peace, we really have to live in an attitude of gratitude, knowing, counting on what the Lord does for us. We've talked about it. We've looked at it. Many of us wrestle with the fact of what is our life's significance? Why are we here? We ask ourselves questions such as, what is the most important thing in life? And we begin to make a list and we begin to try to figure things out. How do I fully live so that I am ready to die? I said, Pastor, that's, that's not something we want to talk about. It's a reality. My dad used to say, from the time you were born, you're starting to die. And I want us to understand that a 16, 17-year-old in North Carolina's life was taken out unexpectedly. I want us to understand, if you, you read the obituaries in the paper, there was a, a, a lady who was over 100 years old who passed away. And we begin to try to rationalize, well, she lived a long, fruitful life, and he only had a short life to live. But I think the importance is, how do we fully live our lives so that we are prepared that whatever the next day holds in our lives, we are prepared for whatever it may be. I do think it's important that we understand that we should be leaving a legacy, a legacy that we leave behind that speaks of who we were. I'm not talking about bank accounts. I'm not talking about real estate or stocks. I'm talking that we individually must leave a legacy to those who have known us our lifetime. And what will that legacy be? What will it focus on? How will I build something in this life that can carry into my eternal life? I think most of us begin to think of that and begin to answer the questions, well, I know where you're going. It's Jesus in your life. It's receiving him into your heart and soul, forgiveness of sins. But the truth is, we as human beings, how God has created us, we desire to live a life that is worth something, that is significant in what we do. We desire to leave this world knowing our life has served a purpose. We want our lives to matter. You can argue with me. You can say, no, no, that's really not why we lived. But I believe within the depths of our heart, we want our lives to matter. And the way that they matter is how we choose to live our lives. So what makes our life significant I believe that the Bible says that when we are, have the practice of gratitude, that it gives us a life here and after with significance. So we ask ourselves, what is gratitude? Gratitude creates us within us a deep sense of happiness and satisfaction which in turn enriches our relationships. It nourishes the formation of new friendship and it is the very foundation of our lives. Expressions of gratitude, not only to each other, but understanding the the importance of gratitude to our Lord and Savior for who he is. 
So what is gratitude? It is an innate desire to show gratitude for the goodness and the grace that we receive. The goodness and the grace that we receive. Now, I want us to look at a, a, probably a little peculiar scripture, a scripture about Noah. And I want us to read through that and understand the goodness and grace that he received. Genesis 8, beginning with verse 15, it says, Then God said to Noah, Come out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Bring out every kind of living creature that is with you, the birds, the animals, and all the creatures that move along the ground, so they can multiply on the earth and be fruitful and increase in number on it. So Noah came out. Together with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives, all the animals, all the creatures that moved along the ground and all the birds and everything that moved on the land came out of the ark, one kind after another. Verse 20. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. Now listen, we're, we're reading this story and, and we're, we're putting into perspective the act of worship and nowhere did you read in this portion of scripture that the Lord said, Noah, build an altar and sacrifice in my name. Without reading it closely, we we might not think of it as an act of thankfulness or gratitude. Consider the fact, Noah had been on this big boat for 356 days. As he walks off the plank, Noah makes a conscious decision that the very first thing he will do is to say thank you to God. God didn't direct him to do so. I want you to keep in perspective that at this particular time when uh, Noah was coming off the ark and, and everything had been destroyed, there was no set commandments or statutes that required worship. Organized religion and faith practices were still a thousand years away from formation, which happened in Exodus chapter 20. Noah and his family had been the only followers of God amongst the society of evil heathens. Therefore, this single practice to God was not a communal practice that he had known of. Offering a sacrifice of thanksgiving was not a social, religious, economic, or habit of his day. He chose to say thank you for God and his provisions. Now, there were sacrifices that happened in early civilization. Those practices were were primarily to offer a sacrifice to a God, hoping that they would bring good fortune upon you and your family. Noah didn't offer this sacrifice out of a need for good fortune or a desire to keep God happy or to appease him. He offered his sacrifice out of a heart of gratitude, his natural inclination a blonde leaving the ginormous wooden box to say thank you, thank you. Now, now let's consider this. Here we are for, for almost a solid year on this uh, ginormous boat with animals of every kind. A lot of things can happen in a year. A lot of stuff happens on that boat. And I'm sure it was not the most comfortable time or the most fragrant time (laughs) 
to be riding with a bunch of animals. It wasn't easy. But yet, Noah understood God's provision for his family. Noah wasn't doing it out of obedience. Noah was doing this out of a thankful heart. The ark had finally settled itself on the mountaintop. And he could walk out into fresh air. And what do you think your first thing to do would be? His was to stop and thank God. So when we begin to think about that, how did God respond to Noah's gratitude? God, he knew Noah's heart understood that Noah leaving the ship and offering a sacrifice was more than just a ritual. It was something from the depths of his heart that he desired to give gratitude to God. In Genesis chapter 8, it tells us how the Lord responded. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, never again. Will I curse the ground because of humans? Even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. As long as the earth endures seed time and harvest time, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. Then God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, be fruitful and increase the number and fill the earth. God responded to Noah's gratitude with a blessing. That wasn't why Noah was doing it. Noah was blessed because he and his family were the only ones who survived this great flood. Noah understood that even though the troubles and trials were on that big old boat, when the winds and the waves started rocking it, when all of the animals were making noises, when his wife was complaining, oh, I didn't say that out loud, did I? I don't know if she complained, but in my mind, she did. Um, But with all of that that occurs, Noah continued to remain faithful. Noah received his blessing because he chose to worship and pleased God. He didn't hop off the boat and, and say, well, it's a good thing. It's good to see dry ground. Man, wasn't that the worst thing that's ever happened to us? And, but he chose to worship because his heart was thankful. And Noah's emotion overflowed into this act of sacrifice and gratitude through an offering. The Bible tells us that God does not desire sacrifice for the sake of sacrifice. But he delights in our expression, our declared praise and adoration, which is an outward expression of what is in our hearts. You see, the key is about what is in our hearts. Our praise and our adoration Our sacrifice, the things that we do and we're looking for a pat on the back for doing them or the things that we do out of ritual and out of habit, God's not looking for those things. He's looking for worshipers who have a sincere and grateful heart that lifts their hearts, praise, in outward expression to who he is. Not for just the things that he does for us. Aren't we like that, though? Aren't we like that, that, oh, we want to give praise to God because he healed my big toe? That's okay. 
But we need to give praise to God because I was a sinner. I was, I was destined for a place called hell and, and the Lord forgave me Amen. of all my wrongdoings. And he came and filled us to be able to walk in his presence. Yes, we praise him for the good things, for the wonderful things that he does. But God is looking for a heart that is worshiping him because of who he is. Not because of the things that he does for us. In Psalms 51, it says this, open my lips, Lord. And my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. Listen, my sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, God, will not despise. Aren't you grateful that we come to him with broken heart for the sin that was in our lives, for the way that we have lived our lives? We couldn't offer enough sacrifices. We couldn't pay enough money that it would make a difference. The psalmist is saying, God, when I come to you broken, And with a contrite heart, you'll hear me. You'll know me. You'll answer my prayers. By choosing that practice of gratitude, we choose the grace that God has freely offered us. And we offer it back freely to him and to others. You see, it comes back to it's not about me. It's not about me. When we receive God's grace into our lives, we naturally want to express it. So what am I saying? I'm saying that if you don't have a desire in your heart to express the wonders of God's great grace in your life, you need to examine your life. Because it becomes natural that we want to express our praise. We want to express our gratitude to the Lord. We do not always know how it will come out or be used or where it will go. But when his, this grace is received, it desires to be expressed. Shared last week, many of us worship in different ways. Some people are criers. Some people just sit and bask in the presence of the Lord unaware of what's happening all around them. Some will lift their hands or stand and praise, and that's all right. It's okay. It's like grief that you learn through a grief share and surviving the holidays. Everybody doesn't grieve the same way. We try to fit them in a box and say, this is how you're supposed to feel. I'm here to tell you that when you experience Jesus Christ in your own life and you experience him to the overflow and the desire to express your worship, your gratitude and your praise to him, it will fit who you are because it must come from the heart. So how do we have the practice of remembering God's grace or his gratitude? Understand what was happening here. Moses was preparing and the Lord was getting ready to to move the Israelites out of bondage. And before Passover night, the Lord gave a clear and precise instructions to the Israelite people regarding the actual Passover event. How the Israelites were to leave Egypt. And the ritual and the practices of the Passover was, tradition was to be passed from generation to generation. Speaking on behalf of God, the scripture says, Moses said, you must keep this commandment as a law for you and your descendants from now on. Do this when you go to the land the Lord has promised to give you. When your children ask you, 
Why do we do these things? You will say, this is the Passover sacrifice to honor the Lord. When we were in Egypt, the Lord passed over the houses of Israel. And when he killed the Egyptians, he saved our homes. Then the people bowed down and worshiped the Lord. Understand that an act of gratitude, the life of gratitude is something that we pass on from generation to generation, explaining God's goodness, God's grace, God's ability to save and to keep us. It's not something that just we expect someone else to teach our children. God set this command because he knew that if he didn't set this future Uh, practice in place to help the Israelites remember their salvation from Egypt, they would eventually forget. They would forget his extravagant, extravagant act of grace. And this significant event would be lost in his people. What am I saying for us today? Sometimes we can lose sight of that salvation experience that we've had. And we've forgotten from where the Lord has brought us. We've forgotten of where we could be if it had not been for the Lord intervening in our lives. Their lack of remembrance would lead to a lack of gratitude. And without gratitude to the Lord for What he had done, their hearts would grow hard. They would forget the Lord's salvation. And they would soon, once again, find themselves as slaves. How quickly we can forget. How quickly we can forget the goodness of God. We must be reminded of his provision. The Passover was to be more than just a ritual. It was a practice of gratitude, a practice of thankfulness for God's grace. Practicing gratitude, receiving and expressing God's grace is the foundation for building a deep and meaningful life that we live Day to day, living in gratitude, living, expressing to God our thanks and his presence that's with us. There's a Roman philosopher who said this. He believed that a spirit of ungratefulness ranked below thieves, rapists, and adulterers. That was from a non-Christian, from a non-believer. That a spirit of ungratefulness is worse than being a murderer, a thief, or an adulterer. The need to be grateful. Our desire is to express, receive, and give grace. And give grace. Grace to others is what makes our life significant. Living in that attitude of gratitude. To live a deep and meaningful life, we must begin by accepting what is freely given, offering this grace back to God in thanksgiving and to others by practicing Sharing the grace of God (coughs) with others. So the question that I ask you, (coughs) where have you seen the grace, unmerited kindness, and generosity of God in your life? Where have you seen 
or extended grace, unmerited kindness toward others? Do you participate? Are you giving? I want us to to know. First Thessalonians tells us, in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you. In all things, give thanks. What if we were to pray a prayer similar to this? Lord, let us live a grateful life, a meaningful life, a life that breathes in and out the realities of your grace. Back to you, Lord, and to others. Lord, let us live a grateful life. May our life be meaningful. May the breath that we breathe reflect your goodness, your grace, and thanksgiving. Would you bow your heads this morning? Listen to the words. How can I say thanks for the things you have done for me? Things so undeserved, yet you give to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude. All that I am and ever hope to be, I owe it all to you. To to you today you are worthy of our praise Lord may it become a natural part of our lives that we don't have to be prompted to say thank you may it become just normal for us in all that we do to want to give you praise to want to give you glory just let us live in a way that is pleasing to you. Help us to count the importance of that blood that was shed for each of us. 
Father, may we understand that gratitude is a lifestyle. That your grace is what we share. And praise that we lift to you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for who you are. Father, I pray that you would be with us as we go from this place. May we leave in expectation of sharing the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior of basking in your presence with great gratitude. Bless us this day. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor Mike will be speaking at 6 o'clock this evening. Wave at somebody, tell them they look wonderful, and you are dismissed.